Hey guys, Dr. Heimlich here, and today we're going to be talking about Hashimoto's and why it's not a big deal, because all low thyroid patients have it. Now, before I get any hate emails or anything of the like, just hear me out. I just had another patient come in and tell me that her doctor had said that to her. He actually said, yeah, you've got Hashimoto's, but it's no big deal. All the people with low thyroid have Hashimoto's. Well, it is a big deal if you're the one suffering with those type of symptoms. You know, hair loss, thinning, constipation, fatigue, cold hands, cold feet, numbness, tingling going on, um, needing excessive sleep in order to have some energy or having fatigue, uh, brain fog, um, gastrointestinal symptoms, all of that stuff. Yeah, if you're having that, that is a big deal. Now, in America, the number one reason to have the low thyroid, like the doctor was correct, is because you have an autoimmune condition called Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And autoimmune means that your body, it doesn't recognize your, the rest of your body as itself, and it attacks it. And if it's, uh, if it's Hashimoto's, the thing that it likes to attack the most is the thyroid. Now, whenever patients come in here who haven't seen my blogs or read my blogs or our videos, and I talk about that to them, uh, the example I use is, especially if their husband comes in, I'll say, uh, imagine you're wearing shorts. And from this day on, I'm giving you this uh, little dog, this little nippy dog, and it's going to be with you the rest of your life, 24-7. And the dog just starts attacking the leg, starts biting the leg, scratching the legs, legs start bleeding. So I pull out some Band-Aids and say, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to put some Band-Aids on those legs because I didn't realize you had a leg problem. I want you to come back in three months or six months, and we're going to recheck your legs. You come back in three to six months, I recheck the legs and say, you know what? Your legs aren't bleeding quite as badly. You don't have to use as much Band-Aids. Come back in another three to six months. You come back again, take a look. Ooh, it's, you're bleeding some more. You know what? you got more scratches. Let's use some more Band-Aids on that. Well, it's not going to take long before you look at me like, man, do you have two heads or something? You need to do something about this dog that's attacking my legs. It's not a leg problem, it's the dog problem. Exactly. It's not a thyroid problem, it's your immune system attacking the thyroid that's the problem. And that's just a good visualization. And for all of you guys out there who are dog lovers, I'm a dog lover too. Nothing wrong with dogs. I could use any animal for the, uh, for the example there. But at any rate, you get the idea. The problem is not the thyroid. The thyroid is getting attacked by the rest of the body. And that's bad enough. But whenever you have Hashimoto's, it also likes to attack the brain. It likes to attack the, uh, uh, the cerebellum, the basal ganglion. Those type of things have to do, if that happens, you can have dizziness, you can have vertigo. Um, I just had another uh, girl in here who uh, was uh, really excited that uh, she's actually getting her hearing back. And I'm going to be posting that uh, on her video testimonies here pretty soon. She was pretty excited. She was, uh, I think she said she was walking in church or something, and she noticed that uh, she was able to communicate with somebody and listen. they were able to hear them from across the, the pew. So she's, she's pretty excited about that, as was I. Um, but anyway, it, attacks, it can attack the brain. It likes to attack the gastrointestinal system, attack the stomach. You, get, uh, uh, you can get the pernicious anemia. You, you can uh, have problems with your B12. Everyone's familiar with probably has thyroid type of issues. You go in... Uh, healthcare provider, or maybe alternative one, they're like, hey, take some B12, I see you're low on this. Um, or maybe some iron, because you have some iron anemias. Um, and that doesn't always help the case, uh, because that's not addressing the problem. Just like the thyroid medication doesn't address the problem, it just helps out with the symptoms. It doesn't necessarily take care of them, but it helps out with them. Um, it also targets uh, the pancreas, so we get blood sugar type of stuff, we get adrenal type of issues going on there as well. Um, so, it's important for you to, to address the immune system and focusing the clinical management on slowing down and modulating that immune system, that immune attack, is crucial if you have Hashimoto's disease. I mean, how can you have a properly functioning thyroid if the body's attacking it? Now, the functional approach um, is all natural, and basically what it's all about is modulating the immune system. You could have your TH1 being too high, your TH2 being too high. Both of them could be right and high and or low. So we have to take a look at is what's going on with those. Is there some dysregulation? Is there some antigen type of things going on? Is there something else that's 
fueling that attack on your body? And if so, what is it? How do you remediate it? How do you get the body to do what God intended it to do? And that's heal itself. I know for some of you out there, you're like, man, that doesn't feel like my body knows how to heal itself. It does. Trust me, everybody has that inside of us. You just have to find the right practitioner to help you to figure out what your body needs to do. If you've got Hashimoto's, that's an epigenetic factor. You can't get rid of it, but you can get rid of the symptomatology. There is hope for that. So what you need to do if you're suffering from this, or you know someone suffering from that, is you need to get them some help. So find a practitioner that knows what we've talked about and knows how to help you get your body to do what it's designed to do, and that's heal itself back up. I'm Dr. Heimlich. Thank you for listening.